On this episode of Tiger TV, we're in the state of Indiana. We talk about failure and tweets. Hi, Baseball Nation. This is Spiker Holmes, where I interview the best in the business, where I try to find out what got them to the top. This is their journey, their stories, and our questions. This is Tiger TV. And there's oh! Another player. What we got? Oh, man. Oh, uh, Ricky, we're going to do an interview. Can <laughs> I leave? Well, go ahead and grab your stuff. Grab your stuff. You got to go. What do you got left? I just have less than one, so I actually got like 45 minutes. So okay, you, we're just going to be 15 minutes. All right, so we're 15 minutes. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. All right, here we go. Welcome back to another edition of Tiger TV. This is episode 10. And Dave is not behind the camera, manning the camera on this historic episode. We are in double digits, and we are at Evansville, or University of Evansville, with Coach Wes Carroll. Uh, Coach Wes Carroll um, played at Evansville, University of Evansville, played five years of professional baseball, is the brother of Jamie Carroll, who played 12 MLB seasons, and um, what else is there? Played professionally for five years and was fortunate enough whenever I retired, uh, came home to, uh, to Evansville, Indiana. Mm-hmm. My wife and I moved back here and I was fortunate enough to walk into an assistant coaching role uh, here in 2006, 2007 season. Uh, so I was assistant coach for two years and then was fortunate enough to uh, get hired as the head baseball coach uh, after two years as being an assistant. Very good. Is there anything else that you'd like to fill in, even though you helped me with that intro? Well, it's always funny whenever whenever they say, you know, the brother of Jamie Carroll. I like to think I could hit a little better than him, but uh, <laughs> he was just an all overall uh, better baseball player than me. But uh, very fortunate to have uh, uh, somebody like him in my in my family and, mm-hmm. and such a close friend of mine that I can bounce a lot of different baseball ideas. He played in the Missouri Valley Conference as well. Uh, so uh, for for eight out of nine years here at the University of Evansville, there was a Carroll at shortstop. And uh, it was a very unique situation here. And he, he actually had a different route than you did. He went the junior college route, yeah. then went to um, the four-year university. Did you, so h- when you saw that as a player, when the recruiting, recruiting was happening and everything like that, how, how did you view that um, with your brother? And then also, let's touch, touch on base when you went to the coaching route. Right. So player and coach, how have you seen the recruiting trail differ um, yeah. as your, as your yeah. years. Absolutely. Jamie was a very unique situation. Um, so really there was a Carroll seven out of eight years because you're right. He went to John A. Logan out of high school, uh, went there for one year, transferred here for three. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Jamie was a, a 5'9", 150-pound kid out of high school, wasn't recruited by anybody, um, had an injury his junior year, and was fortunate enough with two weeks to go in the summer uh, to latch on with Jerry Halstead over there at John A. Logan. Mm-hmm. Uh, Legion ball was pretty big back in the early 90s, and they played in a Legion ball tournament over in uh, Carterville, Illinois, where Logan is. And, and so it was a very interesting uh, recruiting route that he went. Um, obviously, when he got an opportunity, he took advantage of it. And that's what you have to do, I feel like, in the recruiting world as a player. When, you're, when you have an opportunity to perform in front of scouts, uh, college coaches, whatever level it is, you've got to perform. Mm-hmm. And Jamie was able to do that and, and find the right place for him to be successful and to develop. So uh, as a, as a, for me, as looking back on it, recruiting has changed drastically over the past two decades. And if you look at when, as a player, whenever I, I was you know, going through the recruiting process, I thought it was all about numbers. Mm-hmm. And now I'm on the other side of the curtain, I feel like it's the complete opposite of numbers. I, f- I feel like whenever I go out to recruit a young man, I'm looking for little things. I'm looking how they interact with their teammates, how they interact with their coaches, how they get on and off the field, how they interact with their parents. I think that's crucial. And then most importantly, social media. Social <laughs> media tells a significant yeah. amount about the kid and their personality. So it has drastically changed uh, how we view things because baseball is a real challenging sport, Mm -hmm. a significant amount of failure. And and you kind of learn the personalities uh, of these players as much as possible with the little things. Uh, That's what we try to do here at the University of Evansville. And and I talk to my players all the time about social media Mm -hmm. and it's almost like it's getting to a point where they have to be their own business. They have to market themselves the right way because if they put something out there that's wrong, next thing you know, sorry, done. I mean, what, what, what social platform do you find most, most convenient 
right now for, yeah. for, for coaches? Twitter. Twitter is the easiest uh, for me. I haven't gotten into Snapchat. I'm sure that, that's the, the future and mm-hmm. coming down the, the pipeline here soon. Uh, but Twitter really shows it. And that's your resume. Yeah. You know, and, and whenever you're going into the workforce uh, here in the next four to six years, uh, I believe recruiters out there are looking at social media platform as part of your resume. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's amazing as you talk to the business leaders here in, in the city of Evansville that I've sat down with, they talk about 80% of their research is based on social media. Mm-hmm. 20% is the resume and, and the personal interaction that they have with them. So that's pretty mind-blowing. Uh, but it's very challenging to educate 14 to 18-year-olds about the importance of 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 what they're doing once it's put out there it never goes away it's a it just uh, it amplifies who you are it really yeah. does um now we always talk you always hear about success and ha- being being a person that played at the university of evansville mm-hmm. played five years of pro ball having a really really successful background when you head into um when you when you're in that player mode you had failures okay. and a lot of people don't talk about those failures um, what is one failing moment that you had as 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 a player that just it was hard it was hard you didn't know what to do and then you overcame it take us into that moment really really hone in on that because there's some guys out there that are dealing with failing moments right now and they don't know how to overcome it take us into that yeah as as a player I was one of those kids that wasn't the most gifted wasn't the most talented as far as I uh, didn't have the greatest foot speed didn't have the greatest bat speed didn't have the greatest glove but I had a great mind mm-hmm. and. And so I, I was able to overcome a significant amount of adversities just with my mind as far as who I competed against. But going into my junior year in college here at the University of Evansville, I was on some draft boards. I was uh, in, in some pre-draft talk going into the season. And, and so that kind of changed my mindset. And I really went through a major slump and I started pressing. And towards the end of my junior year, uh, I was playing against Missouri State, uh, getting ready to go into the conference tournament. The last Valley weekend, we had a great team. Uh, competing at the top, uh, the top third of the valley, and I broke my foot, and that oh, really kind of I was avoiding a, a, a bad throw from Ziegler at short to Ryan Howard at first, and I just stepped on my foot funny and uh, shattered four bones in six different spots, and I missed that weekend. I missed the conference tournament, but also I missed uh, our, our our run in the NCAA tournament. Went to a regional that year, and that was really heartbreaking, and that that was a big setback in my career because I had built. I played as a freshman, sophomore, and going into junior year, I was going to be a staple of our offense and, and of our defense, and I feel like I really let the team down, uh, not only with my play, my mind, but also then the injury. So that was a really setback for me. Of course, the draft came and went, uh, and you know, back then, the junior, that, that's what you kind of built for, was the junior draft to make your money and to make your you know, move uh, up, up the ranks, and, and I got that all taken away from me. That summer, I sat at home with a boot for the entire summer. And it's amazing, you know, the things that go through your head. Is yeah. baseball coming and going for me? Is this going to be my last year playing the game that I love and cherish and I've built everything in my head for uh, to play at the next level? Uh, and I was able to really learn, uh, learn and understand myself. I met my wife that summer. It's mm-hmm. amazing how when adversity comes and how vulnerable you are where you find growth. Mm-hmm. And I found growth as a, as a person going through that type of adversity. And uh, that summer I really, you know, I got healthy and I came into the fall with a carefree type of mentality where I'm going to try to enjoy being around my teammates, the camaraderie that you have. If this is my last go-around here at the University of Evansville and just baseball in general, I'm going to try to enjoy it and be the best leader I can be. And it's amazing whenever I shifted that mentality, uh, the success that came along with it. Mm. And it's crazy because as a Division One athlete, that's like almost all you know yeah. because you've devo- you're, you're essentially getting paid to play. And you're, you're getting an education out of it, and you, you are so devoted. And then when you have something like that happen at yeah. the very tail end, because then now you're actually getting paid to play, like you're actually receiving money from a club, that, um, it, that has to be tough. Like that has to be absolutely tough. That's when you learn if you truly love it, yeah. is whenever something's taken away from you that's been given to you for so long. You know, the game of baseball is such a, it's an unbelievable sport where it teaches us so much about our personality, the ups and downs, and how to handle failures. When it's taken away from you, that's when the true test is, is okay, do I really want this? Mm-hmm. Do I really want to go get it? And that's, that's when it was for me, but I see it each and every year. You know, that's the fortunate part of, uh, of my job is I see when the light bulb goes off. Mm-hmm. Some kids, it goes off that first semester of their freshman year. Some, it takes that fourth or fifth semester for them to realize, okay, this is what I want to do. This is the next steps I want to take to really elevate my game or just 
mature and become the person that I'm going to be. And, and I think that's a real enjoyment part of being a coach now. You start seeing that passion just start yeah. driving. That, that's the best part. I love seeing kids' passion mm-hmm. just keep on driving. They're like, you know what, I want to get better. Right. Yeah, um, so after Pro Ball, you, 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 you retired, and you're thinking, you know what, what, what do I do next? What's the next step in my life? And then you end up making a, a really cool decision. You went into the coaching route and came back to your university. Why did you come back to University of Evansville? And then at 28 years old, you end up becoming the head coach in 2008 and 2009. Right. The stars really aligned for me. And, and for me, I have a, a deep love for this game. And, and I knew going into pro ball that I, I wanted to, I was going to be around some of the greatest baseball minds, uh, some of the best hitting coaches, uh, uh, pitching coaches, head coaches, and I was a student of the game. I was one of those kids that if I, if I wasn't playing that day, I was on the bench. I was paying attention, mm-hmm. you know, and I was studying the game. I was learning uh, all the ins and outs of it, and so I, I kind of knew that I wanted to have coaching as a back as a backdrop, you know, and and as a fallback type of plan in case uh, uh, my professional baseball career didn't work out. And I was fortunate enough that whenever I walked away from the game, I got everything out of it I could physically or mentally do, made it up to AAA level. I felt like I was so close but so far, Mm -hmm. and I knew my limitations, and I was done playing the game of baseball. Uh, I came home. uh, I I took a job in the financial world world for exactly six weeks (laughs) until I uh, I, I wanted to get out of that suit, and an opportunity opened up here. Uh, Bill McGillis, the athletic director here at the University of Evansville, had a lot of belief in myself interviewed me and, and was able to put me in the assistant coaching position. And then after being here for two years, I was 28 years old interviewing for a head coaching job at my alma mater. Yeah. I mean, uh, it gives me chills thinking about the opportunity that was given to me by John Stanley and to be able to lead this program that I care so much about. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the legend of Jim Brownlee here for 23 years, that's the coach that I played for. He's been a great mentor of mine, and he really built this program from scratch and got us and helped us with Jim Byers making the move into the Missouri Valley Conference, which I think really catapulted the University of Evansville brand and the baseball world uh, to a different level. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very fortunate to be leading this program and very proud um, um, to be able to get the wins that we've been able to do and dogpile in 2014. Yeah, and and the percentages are really against a lot of guys because um, even getting to college baseball is tough. Mm -hmm. Getting to the professional route, that's even tougher. I mean, guys that make rookie ball or even A ball, that is something. Um, and then you get to be the coach yeah. coming back. That like the percentages are like just had to be lined up, and it's just like you're living you're living the dream. That's unbelievable. I am. I am living the dream, and it's it's fortunate that each and every day I get a I get to share this yeah. dream with with a lot of perspe- uh, student athletes that kind of are learning about themselves, and I, hopefully I'm passing some knowledge along. Uh, and leading them, that they think about me the same way that I thought about Jim Brownlee, mm-hmm. and and that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to create here. We have a, a great culture and a great family type of atmosphere, uh, small tight knit type of alumni base. Mm-hmm. Um, this weekend we have over 115 alumni coming back on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, it's just a neat overall feel and culture that we have here at the University of Evansville because this is a very unique student athlete experience here. Mm-hmm. Um, now, you mentioned the Valley um, when you were talking about the University of Evansville and how they entered into the Valley. And the Valley is known for pitchers. Like, mm-hmm. they are known for pitchers by Bob Gibson, Andy Bennis, who's the alum um, here, um, Brad Ziegler, um, Sean Markham. You can just go down the list of guys. Like, you just look on baseball reference and you just see this list of guys. You're like, holy smokes, this is a small Division One conference, but, well, mid major Division mm-hmm. One conference, but they just produce pitchers what is, what is it about the valley because it's hard I, I played in the valley i was at missouri state it is hard like we we'd go against the big 12 and like before the season like i can get all my hits here and then hopefully survive in the valley like what it what is the what is the difference maker well i think it starts with coaching i think we have some unbelievable pitching coaches and head coaches in this in this conference and i think that's where it begins um i think there's also some great keys that really come into play where if you look across the missouri valley conference right now the amount of freshmen Mm-hmm. competing in rotations, competing in leverage spots out of the pen, competing uh, as closers. I think there's a significant amount of freshmen and sophomores that pitch in our league. We're about developmental, yeah. you know, we're a developmental league. And so compared to the bigger schools that have bigger rosters uh, where you might not be sniffing the field to your junior or senior on a mm-hmm. pitching staff, instead of being on a pitching staff of 18, you can currently be on the University of Evansville pitching staff of 12 right now. And so with that, you're going to get a significant amount of innings. I'm a believer you develop in games, not in a bullpen. Mm-hmm. And 
so with that, you see that in the valley where there's a lot of development early. Mm -hmm. And it goes in, you know, as they become a junior and senior, they become elite. Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, something really unique about our conference um, that you see. And also, when you get the reputation of being a a pitcher's conference and and scouts flock to where the the pitching is and you start getting the draft picks year after year at the Missouri Valley Conference – uh, prospective student athlete pitchers out there recognize that yeah. and they recognize the development you know we just came off of a year where we had Kyle Freeland mm-hmm. who was a eighth overall pick in the first round in 2014 he started as a freshman five and five with a five ERA sophomore year got a little better junior year electric lights electric out, lights out. Uh, and goes in the, goes in the first round so it's it's about the overall development of our of our student athletes here because the hitters are good in this conference yeah. I mean you had a guy that was batting what 438. We uh, had a year ago. Last year, Kevin Kasmarski, is, uh, our center fielder, hit 465, led the country in hitting. 465. Yeah. I mean, that has to be feel so good. Like, you just come up like, yeah, just uh, everything looks like a watermelon or a baseball. Yeah, I remember we were about halfway through the season, and he had a bat at bat, and I got upset. I'm like, what am I getting upset about? He's hitting 480 right now. You know, and uh, he's such and a he talented Joe- player. But, yeah, he won the Joe Carter Player of the Year award, but he was a fifth-year player for us in yeah. this conference. And from his freshman year to that year, there's a significant amount of growth, uh, especially his instincts as a player, mm-hmm. and and developed into being one of the best players in our program's history. He got drafted in the ninth round, won a batting title last year with the New York Mets. Wow! Uh, had a couple big league at bats this spring training. Wow! Uh, and so that's what the Valley's known for is those hardcore, uh, uh, scrappy type of players at the plate. I had a scout tell me a couple of years ago that, th- that if you hit 320 in the Missouri Valley Conference, you can hit 320 in high A ball. I about fell out of my chair. That tells you about the legitimacy of our of, pitchers yeah. and what the scouts think about our league. Yeah, and you see first rounders come out come out of the valley all the time. And, oh, yeah. and majority of the time it's pitchers, but you'll you'll see some positionals come out. But it's majority of the pitchers, and it's tough. You'll see 90, 93, 94, and then you'll you'll see. I remember this guy. This this will ring a bell. Uh, Kenny Long from Oh Illinois yeah, Stoy. Yeah. Hey, this guy threw what? He was like maybe eighty one, eighty two, yep. and he was the best pitcher in the Cape, and he had he just made it look like a wiffle ball. Right. It Absolutely. Threw from three different arm angles was really tough to pick up but what i liked about him is he was a competitor oh yeah you know and that's what you that's what you get you get these uh, scrappy kids in our in our conference that have chips on their shoulders Mm -hmm. you know uh and and they come in and want to develop and want to compete at a high level and and we've been able to produce i mean we've turned our conference into a two three bid league now yeah and that's uh, that says a lot i feel like we're we're the best mid-major conference in the country and really proud to be in this conference yeah that's awesome um before uh, next question, if you had a piece of advice that you would love to give to someone else, a, a player or a coach, what type of advice would you give them currently um, on their journey? On their journey, I mean, it's a special one. Uh, the journey of a baseball player and trying to figure out who you are as a person. Uh, for me, the greatest advice I received from my brother was, you know, what we're trying to do, no matter what profession you're in, is get the respect of your peers. And in order, the first step to doing that is being the best darn teammate you can be. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where the real foundation of, 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 of success comes from is, is stop thinking about your personal overall achievements and really try to just be a good teammate to everyone around you. I think if you start doing those little things, start taking care of the program in little ways and taking care of your teammates and treating them with respect, treating them the way that you want to be uh, uh, treated as well, I think then you become a unit. You become more invested in the overall program. You become more invested in your teammates. And that's something that I really cherish and, and, and learned as a player. And it was very challenging to do in professional baseball, but I, that's something that that's I was cut, able that's to cut do. Throat. Absolutely. Oh, cutthroat. But you could also be that guy that picks up the uh, bucket of baseballs when nobody else wants to. Mm-hmm. You can be that type of teammate that's there to bounce ideas off of, be supportive, pick somebody up, never tear somebody down, never think negative ter- towards somebody or thinking or wanting him to have failure so that you can ultimately have the success over him. If you get out of that type of mold and get into more of a caring about the people around you and being the best teammate you can be, a lot of things will take care of itself on the back end. All right, last deal, lightning round. Yeah, you ready? here for we it? go. All right, here we go. Best book that you would recommend yeah. 
for a coach, youth coach, or high school coach? I think anything with John Gordon right now. I, I'm, I'm big on him, the energy bus. Obviously, you've got to eliminate energy vampires out of, uh, out of your life. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really crucial, especially with the new age player. I think the new age player is so different. And John Gordon is really hitting on the positivity of how to handle and how to teach and how to lead the new age type of student mm-hmm. athlete. And I, so I'm a big believer in everything he writes, from the hard hat to winning in the locker room first. Uh, I'm a big believer in John Gordon and, and the movement that he's having from a positive standpoint. It's real challenging to be that way because yeah. you're still trying to you know, mix in the old school type of teaching with the new school type of teaching. Uh, but I, I feel like that's that's the, the, the way to lead in the nowadays culture. Mm-hmm. So... So players have superstitions. Um, what is one thing that you, your guys do, or do they even have superstitions? Absolutely. I think uh, almost everybody has a superstition just to get their mind right. Yeah. I think it's a big part of the playing the game of baseball and, and, and doing things in a routine to make sure that you're confident yeah. uh, in whatever you're doing. We had a player, Kevin Kazmarski, that we've already discussed a little bit, uh, was over-the-top superstitious with where he put his glove, where he put his hat, and he had this awkward hand gesture that he went just to really talk to himself. And you see him <laughs> talk to himself through the course of the game. Uh, but one time in Illinois State, we had him, you know, he delayed the game because he took so long with the superstition to get up to the plate. And I told him after the game, hey, let's cut these superstitions in half and try it. He walks up to the dish, the next at bat, and strikes out. I said, hey, Kevin, do whatever you got to do. Make sure that you make the adjustment, that you're confident whenever you go to the plate. So it's a big part of the game of baseball. It's a lot of fun uh, just seeing everybody's different superstitious. We all have it, but it's all about getting into a routine to making sure that you're comfortable and confident to go out there and perform. Um, what... World, uh, what do you think the World Series is going to look like here? Hey, I'm all in with the Pirates this year. Jay McCarroll is a part of the front office with the Pirates. He's got me believing. Uh, I There's feel that like, marketing approach yes, right there. absolutely. <laughs> He's in the front office. And, you know, for me, I grew up in the free agency era and, and the, in the 80s and 90s. So I fell in love with players. You know, yeah. Don Mangley's from our hometown here. Uh, he was my idol growing up. So I've got to cheer for the Marlins a little bit. Uh, but now, now that Jamie's in the front office with the Pirates, I'm all in with the Buckos, and I—it's tough because I am in Cardinal and Cub country yeah, here yeah. in Evansville, Indiana. But I feel like the Pirates are going to get it done. Who do you, who do you think they're going to play? Oh, I think that's a tough part. Yeah, I think Blue Jays. Jays. I think the Blue Jays. My son's got me believing in the Blue Jays. I with really, all their swag, yeah, with all their swag, and their leg <laughs> kicks and everything. And so uh, I, I believe it's going to be the Blue Jays and Pirates. Gotcha. Um, Last question, what is the best way to, to contact you or reach you if they have any questions about um, the program or if they want to ask you certain questions about, about baseball? What, what's the best way to contact you? Yeah, you can definitely email me at wc2 at evansville.edu. You can follow me on Twitter, DM me on Twitter at westcarroll22. Uh, follow the University of Evansville baseball program as much as you can, and, and if you have questions, please reach out to myself or my recruiting coordinator uh, to really answer any type of recruiting questions that you have. Give us some time, especially if we're in season. We'll do our best to reply as soon as possible. Uh, but, yeah, it's a very uh, unique Unique student-athlete experience here that if you'd like to learn more about, please feel free to contact us yeah. in any way. Like, like, la- like, nowadays it seems like kids, like, when they send out a tweet, like, he didn't respond to me. <laughs> it's like, well, you got to give them time. They, gotta, they, have, they have a season going on. I mean, even the celebrities are like, my celebrity didn't respond to me. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they, they've, got, they've got the lives, they, but they'll, they'll get to you. So. Yes, it's nothing personal. It's yeah. one of those things where when we eventually get to it, uh, we receive anywhere from 20 to 25 emails a day, and we appreciate all of them. Oh, People yeah. that are interested in our program, we are interested yeah. in you as well. It's just we've got to uh, uh, kind of go through it mm-hmm. and communicate because – Every program's in a unique place depending on the year and needs and wants mm-hmm. and scholarship money available yeah. uh, That kind of and, and roster spots open. So it's all about finding the right unique fit for a prospective student-athlete. And if it's here, we're very happy to have you part of our family. Yep. Uh, if not, we'll hopefully educate you and give you whatever resources you need to know uh, to make the right decision. Yep, just consistency, guys. Yeah. Consistency. All right, guys, that's uh, head coach Wes Carroll of University of Evansville. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having appreciate me. I appreciate it. it. Um, next episode will be coming up in the in the coming weeks, um, where we have a couple lined up. Um, one thing, guys, I want to hear your questions. Ask me um, questions about the show. Um, I am getting a lot of emails, a lot of good questions, but um, would love to see the comments below on the YouTube channel or even Facebook. So um, if you like it, make sure you press the like button. Um, it helps us out. All right. See you guys. Thank you.